Do you want to make your DPS look more smooth, more fast, more imperceptible? Today we'll dive into the intricacy of the diagonal palm shift and take you from practicing it in your bedroom to actually being able to use it in live performances. Originally created by S.W. Erdnes in his book The Expert at the Card Table, released in 1902, it is cherished by performers around the globe who consider Erdnes' work to be a form of art. There are so many applications for this move in magic, and there's been plenty of development over the years by countless creators such as Alex Bendrea and Jason England. If you're new to the channel, thank you for joining us, and make sure to subscribe so that YouTube can push this content to other magicians that can benefit from the advice. I took a look at the analytics and I realised that a lot of you are watching these videos and haven't pushed the red button. Subscribing on YouTube is a free thing to do and it only takes a few seconds of your time and it helps out the channel a ton. As well as dropping a thumbs up, as these two things have a big effect on who is showing the content. Pause the video and get that done and after that we'll get back to the DPS. The technique is pretty difficult and knacky in the beginning but I do have some tips that should hopefully help you out and get it looking the way that you want it. There's a lot of psychology which I'll share that goes alongside the slight because without it it just doesn't look as convincing. If you aren't a magician and you just come here for the entertainment, make sure to skip here as we will be talking about sleight of hand and methods, so just a little bit of a disclaimer there. My intention is not to expose magic or reveal secrets, it's just to give magicians a resource that they can refine and improve their techniques. This video is targeted towards performers who can take value away from what I'm sharing. So miss the tutorial of practicing sleight of hand with cards isn't your thing, and I'll see you on the outro. Anyway, grab your pack of playing cards, and let's make your DPS better. Alright, so the diagonal palm shift. Here's a basic overview of how I do the move. So we'll use a card for this, we'll just say the five of clubs. We'll leave it face up as well so we can keep a track of it. So once I start pushing with my thumbs here and my middle finger is pushing against the top edge of the card, leaving it slightly sticking out so that my thumb can contact it up against the edge. My middle finger on the other side is just pushing along as well. So we're going to push it all the way down, dragging the card across, keeping that thumb close as I can to the edge of the pack. And once we reach the bottom, my pinky finger is going to swivel the card out and then at the bot at the base of the thumb, it's going to contact the thumbs will cross, and then only once I'm here, I'll go into classic palm. Before we go any further, I need to emphasise the fact that you don't have to have a perfect classic palm. There are ways that you can do the DPS even if you've got gaps in between your fingers, and I'll be talking about ways of holding the cards so that your hand looks much more natural. The main problem people have with the move is just the big hand spasm thing that goes on. Thankfully, Alex Pandrea taught a wee technique that helps a lot when doing this, and that's just by moving your pinky finger up when you're pushing that card in diagonally. I've been doing this religiously for the last year now, so thanks Alex for the tip. So another problem people have is the corner sticking out here. The way I fix this is just by using this side of the thumb to push against here, and using this part of the thumb to push against here while I drag it back. So like this, almost as if I'm squaring the pack up. The process of pushing the card in should be done relatively slowly, because if you rush the first step, the rest of the motion won't be smooth and you'll probably well be caught, so just be careful. Remember, all that you're doing is just pushing a card into the pack, so don't make a big deal about it for no reason. Try to loosen up and be free with the cards. I like to gesture as much as I can when I'm performing in general, as the idea is when you go to do the palm, it shouldn't look any different from what you were doing before you stole the card. Now on to some of the fun stuff. What to do once you palm the card. Personally, to be honest, I'm not a big fan of handing the cards out straight away, as I feel like it creates too much of a scene. But don't get me wrong, it still works fine if that's the way that you want to do it. But I came up with a little sequence that works for me and feels more natural in my hands. This is what it looks like from behind. Take a card, place it in, move it forward, place it back, gesture, riffle, turn over and then the hand drops to the side. I love this idea of riffling the pack. I feel like it adds to the illusion that the card's hopelessly lost. Here's a little bit more detail. Once I've extracted the card, I bring the pack forward and I'm just holding the card here, I'm not in full palm yet. It's only when I bring it back to grab the pack that I go into full classic palm and then I can show this hand empty and then I do a wee riffle of the pack. I turn it over, flip it over 180 degrees and then this hand just drops down to the side. Another way that a lot of people do it is once they've palmed out the card 
they'll turn the deck over this way so it's almost in a vertical position and then they'll do their ruffle here and you can do that if you want it's actually quite nice if you do that and then you go into the other ruffle sequence so once you've palmed out the card here you can turn it over do a ruffle here and then turn it back over here and do another ruffle and then you can gesture turn it over place your place your hand down but it is a bit overproven. A lot of people ask what is the best angle to perform their DPS at. I think if you turn your body to the right it gives you plenty of space to work with and you're covered from pretty much that entire angle because if you take a card you place it in you can see that we're protected here and we move it back we're still protected we can bring it here plenty of space and then set it down or turn it over. If you want some bonus ideas to play around with you could try doing it from an end jog here and it's just the exact same technique. That's the technique in a nutshell, but the psychology if you want to use this is all about your eyes. You must never look at your DPS when you're performing at all costs, no matter how much you might want to. This may seem obvious to some of you, but it's not always followed. Instead you should be talking, making eye contact, and looking into the distance when you gesture. And if at all possible, just do it on the offbeat. The move can be made even more invisible in certain situations, such as at the table where you can use the spread as a cover for the diagonal bomb shift. I highly recommend setting up a rear camera to record, and practicing it this way, as in real life you can't see if you're flashing or not, so make that a habit. If you implement these techniques next time you're performing, I'm sure you'll be surprised with the results you get. Thanks to all the new subscribers and followers on Instagram. Let me know in the comments whether you have confidence to use the move after the tutorial, or any questions about your own DPS, I'll be happy to answer. Make sure to stay tuned every Saturday for a new video. If you want to learn how to film on a low budget, make sure to check that out. I also did a Q&A last week where people asked me questions and I tried to answer them as best I could. There's a lot of cardistry and magic in it if that's something that you're into. That's all I've got to say in this one guys, but I'll catch you in the next one.